Should Christians call out other Christians? What is our responsibility to judge people? Pastor Mike, should we call them out by name? Because the Apostle Paul called them out by name. Pastor Mike, if we don't set it straight through Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, TikTok, MySpace, if we don't do it, who else is going to do it? This is the question that we're going to answer today. I've got some friends with me. I want you to make sure that you stick around for the entire broadcast because we're going to be spitting some wisdom. We're going to bring clarity to this, and it's going to be an incredible time together. But help me welcome in the comment section right now, Shane Winnings. Come out. Hey, guys. <laughs> and then we've got Evan Wilson. Hey, what's up, everybody? And we're going to bring it today. You know, there's a lot of stuff happening right now in the body of Christ. And quite frankly, there's a lot of disagreements in comment section. And there's heresy hunters. In other words, there's people who build entire YouTube channels off of the idea of we're going to set the record straight. We're going to show you what the Bible actually says. And there, there's call-out culture. There's cancel culture. I think I've been through five rounds rounds of canceling already myself. <laughs> I'm sure, Shane, you've been canceled a couple of times as well. Yeah, just Have, recovering from a recent one. Are you? <laughs> yeah. Okay, we might talk about that today. Hey, right now in the comments section, before we give the answer, why don't you ask, answer the question that we're asking, should Christians call out other Christians? Drop a comment right now. Let us know what appropriate place, what venue, how do we do this? So we're just going to jump right in. And I'm going to start by telling a story, and then I want to hear what Shane has to say. Uh, here's the thing. I was ordained at 22 years old, and this story is going to be very profound for many of you, and there's a lot of wisdom that's missing in the body of Christ right now. But at 22 years old, I was ordained in pastoral ministry, and every single Wednesday at noon, there was a roundtable that physically met with 50 and 60 and 70-year-old pastors and we got together, it was pastors of different races, pastors from different backgrounds, and we sat at a table, and we would share our previous week, and we would talk about what went right, what went, went wrong. And if anybody in that table discerned that we were in the wrong and we did something wrong, we had this basket full of cookies in the middle of the table, and one of the guys would look, and they'd say, okay, Mike, go ahead and grab the basket. And we would all say, oh! And because we knew we were getting ready to be rebuked. And what we would use this phrase, and it was a group of guys, and we'd say, okay, it's time to undress. And what we were saying, not to be crude, was it's time to get emotionally, it's time to get spiritually and mentally vulnerable and transparent. And it's time to actually say the thing that someone else doesn't love you enough to say. And we would get vulnerable and they'd say, okay, Mike, let me show you where you are wrong. Let me rebuke you. Let me show you where you missed it in the word. And I, of course I would be crying. Oh, I can't believe I didn't see it. And then at the end of it, one of the guys would say, okay, now take your cookie. And in my twenties, every single week, for years, I would sit at this round table and I would get rebuked. And then sometimes we would rebuke the other guys. And, you know, they'd say, and I, even at 22 years old, they would say, okay, um, Mike, how do you see it? And I'd say, well, you were forsaking the youth of your church and you didn't see it. And so, you know, Timothy this, and we would talk about it. And then they'd say, get him, Mike, rebuke him. You know, and we'd all be laughing and then we'd be crying. And then we'd say, okay, now eat your cookie. And in my 20s, the foundation of ministry for me was laid by this, by this experience of actually comparing a rebuke to eating a cookie. So for me, receiving correction was normal. Receiving correction was expected. Receiving correction was invited. And it was like a de the dessert of Christianity was yeah. a rebuke. Now fast forward, I'm much older, decades have passed, and here I am, a national lead pastor with locations all over America, and, and now building this internet presence, tens of thousands of followers on every platform, and I'm realizing we don't have that table anymore. We don't have a loving group of people coming around and rebuking each other. We don't have that. What we have is call-out ca culture, cancel culture. We have no love we have people who want to bring correction without love. We want to. We have, we have people who are actually using it. It's so cringy. We have. We actually have people 
that are using rebuke and correction to build platforms. So Shane, you know, you, you just admitted that you went through your last round of cancel culture. <laughs> but what is going on in the body of Christ? Help somebody. Yeah, I mean, there's this, you know, this desire to uh, validate yourself. And uh, I think people feel most validated when they're getting a lot of views and they're getting a lot of comments and wow. likes. And, and when we, people are agreeing with you, you think you're doing something right. And that's not always the case. And so with these heresy hunters, you know, if they can rally a bunch of people up uh, to point the finger at you, then they feel like, wow, I'm validated. I'm, I'm great. You know, I'm, I'm making something of myself. And I'm also tearing down this false teacher, this false whatever. Uh, and the one that I, you know, I just went through, I was laughing about it, but this guy did a whole like investigation on me of a video I posted three years ago where we had like literal revival miracles break out at a restaurant my wife and I went to. We had one person healed, then they called a coworker over, they got healed, and the manager came over to find out what was going on, they got healed. And we shared this testimony and it went viral on the internet. And three years later, I'm starting to get comments on it again. And I'm like, what's happening? And I realized that it made it to the wrong side of TikTok. And uh, I'm starting to get all this hate and people are saying, you're fake, you're faking the miracles. And come to find out there's like this basically three-part mini documentary series on TikTok this guy did investigating, calling the restaurant, trying to find out if it was real. Uh, you know, he was in the wrong state, wrong city, calling the wrong restaurant. Uh, and I tried to help him with the right information. But the point is, you know, he was building his page on tearing mine down. And, uh, you know, what's sad is he, he's an atheist, so I could understand that. But with among Christians, we have the same thing happening. Mm. And we're supposed to be on the same team. And so that's what's really blowing my mind is, you know, you expect to be persecuted by, you know, people who don't even believe in God. But when you get it from people who claim to follow the same Jesus that you do, it's really confusing. It, it is really confusing. The comment section is going crazy right now, by the way. I know Apostle Pagani often says, if somebody says it publicly, I can correct it publicly. Yeah. But I want to add a caveat to that. He is speaking from 40 years of ministry experience yeah. as a leader in the body of Christ. And what we're talking about specifically right now is people who've never even done ministry but are critics of ministry. People, you know, the Bible says don't just be hearers of the word, but be doers also. And we have a whole generation of people who have viewed ministry, who've heard the word of God, but have never done the word of God. And it's it's to me that's it's like, how are you gonna be a culinary critic, but you're not a chef? <laughs> how are you gonna be a literary critic, but you're not an author? And I think the problem that I have is people are building monetizable pages where they're making money off of the revenue that comes in from the commercials on the content they create. And they have people even donating to their ministry and they're calling it a ministry. And they say this thing, it's a discernment ministry. And it's like, no, it's not. It's not a discernment ministry. It's a it's the spirit of criticism. It's the spirit of complaining, backbiting, murmuring, gossip. Mm. Actually, the Bible says that where there's gossip, there's every other yeah. evil work. If you want to open a portal to hell, don't do a seance and put a pentagram in salt. Just gossip. Wow. It has the same result. And so a lot of what people are doing calling discernment is Christian TMZ. Mm. You're a Christian tabloid. It's not discernment. You know, because you know when you need discernment is when you're walking through the streets of your neighborhood and you need discerning of spirits because you're going to deliver people from demons. Come on. You know when you need discernment is when you're actually building kingdom infrastructure by discipling disciples that make disciples, and you need to actually be able to help them get freedom and breakthrough so that they can get people through freedom and breakthrough. Like, But if you need it to get more views, get more likes, get more comments, and pump the algorithm to actually earn more, like you said, approval, right. I'd check your motives. Well, yeah. that reveals your heart immediately, is if you're in it for anything other than to see people restored then you're yeah. in the wrong spirit. You, you know, and Jesus would even say, you don't even know what spirit you're of. And that's, <laughs> that's something that you need to yeah. really consider. Um, you know, I even think of something that uh, Daniel Kalinda said. He, he said, don't preach uh, fire and brimstone unless you weep over the souls of men. <sighs> and so mm. there's this thing of, 
man, is it biblical to preach fire and brimstone? Yes, but do people do it in the wrong heart? And, and God's heart is not expressed through that? Absolutely. Well, it's the same thing when calling out other people. What is the purpose? Because there are people that call out other ministries and other people because they need to feel validated by having people agree, and they want to tear someone down. And then there's people that call others out because they want to protect. They want to protect yeah. the body of Christ. We're, we're guardians, right? We're shepherds. And we really care when our sheep are being exposed to uh, you know, a, a wolf in sheep's clothing. Mm. And so it's really about the motive. And so when you see people that are doing it with the wrong heart, uh, that should actually lead you to pray for them because they're exposing themselves, actually. Yeah. And you know what's funny about people, so many people, you know, these heresy hunters that have the gift of discernment, 100% of what they discern is negative. Right. Like, they never discern somebody's purpose. They never discern somebody's spiritual gifts and activate them and encourage them prophetically. Mm. It's like, wow, so you have the gift of discernment, but 100% of what you discern is negative, critical, and... and uh, just negative to the body of Christ. And so I right. think that if you truly have the gift of discernment, are you going to discern things that need to be corrected? Absolutely. But can you also, like, is it is it balanced, right? Yeah. And so, yeah, I think that a lot of people will, uh, you know, blanket term like, oh, well, I'm just, I'm discerning things for the kingdom. But it's like, but are you, or are you just negative? Right. It, that's so That's such a good point. Is you? I never see discernment ministries endorsing anybody. Yep, it's very rare. It's like you're, and who wants to define themselves by what they're against? Huh. For God so loved the world that He gave. There's something about like defining your ministry exclusively. It's like the Bible says we don't fight against flesh and blood, but principalities and powers and rulers in high places. And there's so much of a fixation. It's like, I want to fight the devil. I want to fight demonic minions that are behind the doctrines of demons. And so it's like the Bible even uses that phrase, the doctrines of demons. And so even if it's a human espousing those doctrines, there's still a demon behind it. Yes. Who are we actually fighting? And my thing is, <laughs> what I love about the Lord is he will raise up people you don't like yep. to actually work on your character. Wow. He'll grace and favor somebody and anoint somebody you don't agree with to actually work on your character. And I love that about God. That's good. Now, here's the thing I wanted to bring into this conversation. When I was coming up in ministry, I got rebuked at least once a week, and I told that story at the beginning of the stream. Drop a thumbs up if you heard it, okay? But here's the thing. Those men wanted to see me win. They weren't waiting to see me fall. That's it. And quite frankly, mm -hmm. Shane, and you can spit some wisdom on this too, much of the discernment community, the call-out culture, they celebrate people falling. They love to see people fall. They're plotting your demise. They can't wait. They revel in the fact that you fall. For me, when I was sitting at that round table of, of 50, 60, 70-year-old pastors, they were like, Mike, we want to see John chapter 15. We want to see you remain. We, we want to see you go the distance. We want to see you go to your 70s, 80s, and 90s and remain in ministry. And I feel like the call-out culture, you know, these, 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 these oh, we got to watch out for the wolf. It's like they want to see people fall. You, my heart is a heart for restoration. My heart is to see Saul turn into Paul. My my heart is to actually see somebody go the distance. Like we should weep over Judas. You know, I've even said this: when you get the heart that I'm trying to 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 give to you guys right now, I've even wondered: was Judas supposed to preach the sermon of Acts chapter two? Wow. Like Peter did it. Peter denied Christ three times. So we know denying Christ was not powerful enough to actually stop the gospel and stop the grace of Christ from elevating him up to the place to preach a sermon where 2,000 people get saved in a moment. But what if? What about Judas? Was grace strong enough for Judas? Wow. But the thing is, it's like you can't even think like that if you're reveling in the fact, yeah, look, G Judas hung himself. Yeah, he's like, I hated that guy. Right, he's reaping what he sowed. Yeah, he <laughs> reaped what he sowed. Yeah. That guy was a wolf. He re So it's like, for me, our, I mean, the real victory is not, yes, I got the whole internet to hate this wolf. The real victory is, wow, I got this guy to come into alignment with the word of God, and he's empowered by the Holy Spirit. And now Jesus prayed that we would be one. Yeah. 
and and many of you guys are actually hoping that you'll become number one. It's a completely different value system. Wow. It's like we got it. And so for me, there's a place. I rebuke people for a living now, <laughs> but I rebuke them through relationship. I rebuke them through love and compassion. And I'm also willing to see them through a process of restoration and healing. And that's the other thing is there is there a process that's connected to the rebuke? Is mm. there love connected to the rebuke? Is the relationship connected to the rebuke? What is connected? So I think for me, you know, and it's funny for me, I always, and I know the same, Shane, you go through the same thing. It's like, I love going on YouTube and then seeing myself in a thumbnail. And I'm like, oh, here we go. <laughs> yeah. Here we go. And, and oh, for those of you who are making these thumbnails, can you, I've lost 40 pounds. Can you just Give use a newer picture? Yeah. An updated picture? Come on. You know what I mean? At least it's, rebuke the current Mike Signorelli. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, which version of me are you rebuking? There's even videos that I've posted that I've taken down and corrected. Yep. So which version of me are you rebuking? You don't even know me, homie. You know, you're rebuking Fat Mike. <laughs> I don't even like him. He's different. Yeah, I'm different. Well, you let, know? can I play the, the advocate side of this too? Because yeah. I do agree that uh, rebukes and all of that, if possible, should come out of relationship. Yeah, but, let's go deeper. But what if what if you don't have a relationship? Yeah. Like, what if there is a, a mainstream pastor that is pumping out false gospel, false stuff, and you see a lot of your followers liking their stuff because maybe it's gray, it's muddy, it's not totally clear to someone <laughs> who's not, you know, sharp in discernment, you know, should we just be quiet because we don't have a relationship? Like, I have seen that used to justify uh, not speaking out against people who are clearly, they're not just an error, but they're actually preaching something that is going to lead people astray. So I think my question is, and I'm seeing some of the comments here, and you, know, you guys, we're looking at the comments, I'm trying to address what you're bringing up. You know, Pastor Mike, is there a time when it is right to, you know, make a video addressing a, a, a person who is on social media or who's a big pastor? You don't have a relationship with them, but they are damaging the body of Christ with their teaching, and you feel compelled to, to say something. Okay, absolutely. And I'm glad that you segue because I wanted to lay a foundation and then transition into this. I did that last week. Hmm. We, you, me and Isaiah Saldivar and Alexander Pagani had 10,000 people watching for three and a half hours as we were trying to bring alignment to the body of Christ. Wow. And we were trying to deal with, with some very questionable practices and theological perspectives. And I believe that that was very necessary. But here's, let me give you guys some questions you need to ask yourself as you're determining whether or not you should or shouldn't do your live stream or do your video. What dimension of authority are you speaking from? John Maxwell says, if you are a leading and have no followers, you're taking a hike. <laughs> you know, wow. like, yeah. like if you are, if you're yeah. leading and you don't have any followers, you're just taking a hike. That's right. Yep. And so there's a lot of people that do not have the dimension of authority that is necessary to speak into issues. Mm. As a matter of fact, I've been journaling for the last 25 years and every single day I journal and I, I found some of my old journals last night and I was just going through them and I was kind of smiling and laughing and I was like, oh man, it's been a wild ride. And I went all the way back to 1999. And this is me journaling in 1999. And there were there, the first journal entry that I read, I was like, oh wow, this is fire. This is good content. I got to the end of it and it was quotes and it said TD Jakes. <laughs> then I read the next page and I was like, oh, this is fire. And I got down to the end of it and it said Derek Prince. And what I realized is that in 1999, when I did not have a global ministry, even my personal journal was me quoting other significant ministers. Mm. And I learned how to be an echo before I became a voice. And there's too many people that never go through the season of copying down someone else's thoughts before they try to formulate their own. Mm. You got to learn how to become an echo before you're a voice. For three years, the disciples were following Jesus, and Jesus was like, learn how to say what I say, do what I do, repeat what I repeat, and then I'm going to go to the Father, and then you're going to learn how to become an apostle. And there's too many people right now that have not done the time to, to act. Like, let me put it like this. 
If you can't be under authority, you should not be in authority. Come so on. you got people who are not even submitted to authority. You can't even echo the voice of the leader above you. So how can I believe that you hear God who's unseen if you can't even serve a man that's visible? Wow. So it's like, that's my point is this is the thing I love about my training. I was raised in the circles that are referred to as fivefold. And what that means is there's a, a stream of Pentecostalism called fivefold. And what that means is they believe in apostles, prophets, evangelists, teachers, and preachers, and the fivefold ministry coming together. And you always know when somebody came from that tradition because they will always tell you their spiritual lineage. And they will say, now, if you watch Apostle Pagani and you go to his YouTube, whenever he's going to bring correction, he'll say, I am under this minister who's under this minister. And he's telling you his chain of command. Isn't it funny that when Jesus confronted the demons, they said, we are legion for we are many. And legion is a hierarchical structure that has layers above. Mm. Isn't it funny that Jesus had disciples who had disciples who had disciples? Isn't it funny that when you read the New Testament, you are reading epistles. These are letters written by apostles to eldership to read to people. So even reading books of the New Testament, you are reading no less than three layers of a hierarchy. Come on. And yet you got people with YouTube channels that I'm saying, who's your pastor? Uh, 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 uh. <laughs> who, who is your pastor? Right. Yep. And then who's your pastor's pastor? Uh, 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 I watch so-and-so. I listen mm. to so-and-so's podcast. Well, that's a monologue, not a dialogue. That's Who are good. you dialoguing with? So here's rule number one. If you're not in authority, you, you, or if you're not under authority, you shouldn't be in authority. Rule number two is if I can't trace your lineage, you're an orphan. Mm. And I don't take rebukes from orphans. That's just the number one. Mm. Um, because how can you have authority to give a rebuke if you don't even have the humility to receive one? Whew. Come on, somebody. Wow. So Dang. these are the rules of engagement. And, and it's, if, if you were like, why did you have 10,000 people watching you last week? It's because I can tell you who Isaiah Saldivar's pastor is because I met him and sat at a table with him. And I've watched Isaiah Saldivar literally post videos apologizing and correcting theological statements and correct because Apostle Pagani can tell you who his spiritual father is. And, and I can do the same. And so we carry weight on our words. And that's the problem is like, even if you're right, you don't carry weight all the time unless you're under authority. Yeah. And I think, you know, purity of heart is, is crucial mm -hmm. because that, you know, you guys know you watch a video and you can, you can discern what spirit the video was made in. And when someone's heart is pure and their intention is simply to bring light to something that's yeah. untrue to protect, uh, that really comes across. And yeah. so, you know, it's funny because for the last three years I've been preaching on social media and, you know, sometimes people would call me pastor, and then I went out and I, I got to preach at a, a mentor's church, and he introduced me as pastor, and I'm like, man, I'm not a pastor, you know? I don't have a church. And he said, no, Shane, you pastor people online. And something changed in me when I actually began to view the people that follow my, my teaching and follow me as a congregation. I actually gained, like, a fatherly heart for them. Mm -hmm. And I noticed when I was an officer in the military— you know, my, my right-hand man and I, we would joke, but we'd call our soldiers our kids. And wow. there is a different, uh, there's a different accountability, there's a different um, relationship that you have when you view someone as your children, because you will take it way more seriously, you'll care about them in a different way. And so when I began to view my following as a congregation that I was pastoring, I all of a sudden had this new urge to protect. Yeah. And so there have been a couple videos I made where I, I saw it, and my first thought wasn't like, oh, look at this, you know, goober or whatever. <laughs> I thought I was grieved. Yeah. I heard the teaching, and it was so muddied, but clearly so wrong, that I was grieved that someone might believe this. Mm -hmm. And so with much prayer and talking to wise counsel, I was like, you know what? I need to make a statement about this. And sometimes I have. And you know what? There's been other people that... Uh, I was very grieved by, but I did not, and I have not, and I will not make a video about it because the Lord has, you know, instructed me on how to handle it. But I think the point is, one, you have to be hearing God like He said, and two, 
y y your motive has to be squeaky clean. Yeah. Like, if your motive is not to protect others, then you'll just go on a rampage, and everyone who's not saying something you agree with will be a heretic in your eyes. And you know what? The problem with that is you'll never run out of content. Mm. And you might get tons of likes, but you don't actually have any followers. You don't mm. actually have anyone that you're leading. Wow. And uh, I think that's key for, for anyone who's listening to understand is like, I, I don't want to build a platform on tearing others down. Yes, the Bible does say to have nothing to do with darkness, but to expose it. You know, yes, Paul wrote a letter, and he's like, I'm glad I made you sorry, but it was to lead to your repentance, right? To lead to your restoration. Uh, the, the Bible calls us to restore people with a spirit of gentleness. So we have right. to remember, we're, we're easy on people, we're hard on demons. Yeah. We're hard on sin. We're hard on wrong ideas. So, you know, we might call things out in a hard way, but the goal is to restore a person, and we do that with that spirit of gentleness. So... You know, in the comments, guys, don't get all mixed up thinking, well, you know, we can't call people out because we don't have a relationship, or flip side, we're supposed to call out darkness so we can just make a video about every bad thing. Like, there has to be maturity, wisdom, there has to be a relationship with God, you have to be biblically grounded, and at the end of the day, you have to ask yourself, what's my motive? You know, I've made videos before, and I, and I didn't know if I should post it or not. And the Lord would tell me, you know, at the last minute, or there's been videos I made, I posted it, and I instantly knew uh, this isn't coming across the way I hoped it would, because the first few comments were, like, mean and sarcastic. And I'm like, man, that must be the spirit that came off. Time to delete this video. So you've got to do this stuff with humility, but it, it does have to happen. Yeah, and, and one thing I'll say to that, Shane, because that's so good, you know, the the motive and the heart behind bringing any sort of correction or or confrontation is so important. And and I think about, you know, how we're called to have the heart of our father, right? Mm -hmm. And and he is the best father. He is a perfect father. And and I just had my first kid, my son, and I know you're a relatively new parent as yeah. well. I haven't got to this point yet, but there will come a day where I have to discipline my son. Yes. I got to give him a spanking. I got to give him a stern word. What good father takes any kind of joy or satisfaction out of spanking their kid? Right. You'll do it because you know that that's what they need in that moment, and that's what's going to develop them and mature them into who they're supposed to grow up to be. But I see so many people who've built platforms on calling people out, rebuking people in the body, and they get some like sadistic satisfaction out of it where I'm like, you don't have the heart of the father because, because no good father takes satisfaction out of that. Right. It's out of love. And, and I think it was C.S. Lewis who wrote, to love your neighbor as you love yourself. The way we love ourselves is we see the flaws, but we want ourselves to get better. And yeah. so to love somebody else... We'll, we'll acknowledge the flaws in them, but it's out of a, a, a heart posture of like, I don't want you to be like this anymore. I want you to be who God called you to be. And so yes. the motive and the heart behind it is, is probably the biggest thing. I mean, Matthew 7, it talks about like, why are you so worried about the speck in your brother's eye when you got a plank in your eye? Right. And there's people who have YouTube channels calling out pastors for moral failures while they're addicted to pornography. <laughs> and it's like, guys, like, like first things first, what's your walk with Jesus like? Right. And so, yeah, I think the heart is, is just so essential. So we had this conversation so far from the perspective of the person that's doing the rebuking or doing the discernment or the call out. I want to address the audience, the okay. people who are reading the post, who are watching the what is it? Three part docu series yeah. on TikTok about you. <laughs> yeah. I got like a six part. I got, you know, but let me address this. Don't necessarily be, how do I put this? Don't just be skeptical, skeptical of the minister and not be skeptical of the quality of the information being posted about them because there's a lot of bad information. Like I've read posts about me that I'm like, none of this is true. Seriously, I, I've said, right. and there's even been parts of times where I've wanted to jump in and be like, actually, for all my faults and failure, 100% of what you just said is actually wrong, you know? Yes. And so the quality yeah. of the information also matters. And there's so much bad information online where you're like, actually, you don't know what you're talking about. The other thing I want to say is this, and I say this too much almost. But we have legitimately hit fastest growing church in America category for the last four years. 
I own buildings, I purchase real estate, I run a multinational ministry, multiple multinational ministries. If I told you guys how much money I goes out in bills, I have multiple staffs that I lead of multiple different entities, and people feed their entire family and pay all their bills off of the payroll that I provide them through the different organizations that I've built. And when I watch these these call out culture, you know, heresy hunter videos, and they're critiquing someone's ministry. I, there's a part of me that laughs because I'm like, you are so dumb. You don't even know what you're talking about. You've never built anything. You can't even pay your own bills. You don't even know how to run your own family's finances. You don't know anything about anything. And I'm just calling a spade a spade. When I say dumb, I legitimately mean because dumb is a choice nowadays. It is. (laughs) And so it's like you don't. And so people are critiquing how other people are building things, but they've never built anything. And so it's like, I don't care what you think about being a pastor if you've never been a pastor. I, I just don't care. Right. Yeah. It's like because you have no idea what it's like. It, you know, people will critique a church. It's like this everybody is a critic of a sermon until they have to preach. And then mm. they want grace. The most <laughs> empathetic people yeah. towards preaching are other preachers because they're like, I know what it's like to get up there and ha- and feel like I have diarrhea. Yeah. <laughs> I know what it's like to go up there and you misspoke. One time, there was a, a very big Instagram channel that put a picture uh, or a video up of me at a major conference that I preached, and they were like, this is word salad, and this guy doesn't know what he's talking about. <laughs> the truth is, I, it was word salad. Like I, I remember being in front of all those thousands of people, and something happened where my sermon derailed, and I'm standing in front of them thinking, how do I get back on track? I have, you know, because it's very hard to preach a sermon. And there's, I've had viral clips where millions of views where I'm killing it, and I'm known as a decent preacher, but that doesn't, that's not the same as being a perfect preacher. Right. So it's like, so you took the, 15 seconds where I screwed up and you were like, look at this guy doesn't know what he's doing. And it's like, yeah, for those 15 seconds, I did it. And the only kind of people who make that kind of content have never preached a sermon in their life. That's good. Cause mm-hmm. anybody else who's preached has been like, yeah, man, I feel you. Me too, bro. I've been there too. So the most unempathetic people are the people who've done nothing with their life. And yeah. it's just like, you know what I mean? Or like people are like, Oh, you're a false prophet. It's okay. Okay. Let me hear you prophesy. Give me a word of knowledge right now. Right. Because mm-hmm. anybody who's ever prophesied knows prophecy is very, very difficult to be accurate 100% of the time. There's a measure of humanness in it. There's a measure of grace. And the least gracious people are the people who have done the least. Mm. That's the wisdom key. And so does that mean they can't say nothing true or give you value? I'll be honest. I've learned to listen from to everybody. Yeah. And I do think mm-hmm. that somebody who's in the audience can provide tremendous value about my sermon. What connected with you? What what helped you? You know, what and so I do solicit information from people below me, beside me, and above me, because good leaders do that. Yep. And I, and I, but I also come to understand that when people are only being critical, there's a difference between hey, this is constructive, you know, take it or leave it, versus like coming from a posture, and I think you nailed it in the beginning of this broadcast, it's like, um, am, am, I glor- am I reveling in this, right? Mm. And, you know, then the other thing I want to say, and then, I'll, uh, you know, if you guys want to chime, yeah, somebody says, you're, Isaiah's in the chat saying you're dropping nukes. Hey. Uh, <laughs> What's up, Isaiah? <laughs> what up? But the other thing I want to say about, the, about this whole thing is, is maybe you don't know what you're talking about. You know, maybe maybe you're not right. Maybe you're trying to give a correction and there's a reason why the person you're trying to correct is successful and you need to just sit down and learn and observe. Yeah. Because the thing I don't like about social media is the comment section has conditioned all of you to thinking that your comment brings value. Mm. and that your comment matters. Mm. And maybe it doesn't. Maybe somebody's successful and they're not your flavor. You know what I mean? It's like, you don't like the way I talk. You don't like the speed, the cadence, the value or the, t- the volume or the tonality of my voice. Maybe I'm not for you, dude. People don't like Chick-fil-A. It didn't stop them from being a billion dollar company, bro. Right. Maybe you just don't like chicken sandwiches. Go eat tacos. Dude, let me hit on this. Go Come tee on. off on it. I'm so, trying to fire you up. One, when I was a, an officer in the military, you know, I was a lieutenant and I had a captain above me 
Um, and then I had a right hand man and a bunch of leaders that I was in charge of, but my platoon was almost 80 people. And if I really wanted to know what was going on in my platoon, I went down to the lowest guy. And I said, what, what's happening? How do you feel? How are you being impacted by the decisions that are being made? And I valued their opinion. But that's when I went and I, and I wanted to hear it. And sometimes they would just voice their opinion and I would pick up on it. But, you know, as a leader, you got to take things with a grain of salt because people can be ornery, they can be jaded, they can be whatever. And so, you know, they might not be giving you the best information. It's going to be filtered through the lens of their, you know, offense or whatever. But a humble leader is going to be able to receive any type of information. You know, then you can chew the meat and spit out the bones. Yeah. Uh, so it's important, like like you said, Pastor Mike, to be able to go below and beside and above to get this. But when we're talking about other p- teachers and preachers, I'll tell you right out, right out of the gate, there's a ton of preachers and teachers that I don't like to listen to. That doesn't mean they're unbiblical. Yeah. <laughs> right. I just don't like. I don't like their delivery. I think some people are way too flashy, too showy, too whatever. You know what? That's my own personal preference. Mm-hmm. But when I begin to judge the motive and the heart of another person is when I get in trouble mm-hmm. because only God truly knows the heart. And so you might have a preacher who is giving a fire message and he is, or, or you know, whatever, he, he is delivering like straight up truth, but he's doing it in a way that I I hate watching, you know, he's flailing all over the place and he's screaming and he's spitting and he's doing all this stuff. I don't want to listen to that, but that's just a personal preference. I'm not going to call him a false teacher because I'm like, oh, he's just, he's emotionalizing everything. He's trying to manipulate people because he's yelling and he's trying, that, that's scary territory to be in. Whenever someone calls me out, I immediately, if, if I'm going to engage with them, I say, can you quantify and qualify what you're saying? I want to know specifically why I am a false teacher, because if I am and I have a blind spot or something and one of my buddies hasn't called me out, I want to be correctable. So please tell me exactly what I said that was unbiblical. And you know what? A hundred percent of the time, it has not happened. Now, when I have Pastor Mike, who's one of my mentors or some of my good friends, they'll call me, they'll, they'll message me and they'll say, hey, man, you know, I saw this video or this post you made. Can you explain this? Or this is how it came off. I know that they have my heart in mind and their heart is pure and they want to help me be better and communicate better. But when it comes from someone online, I, I will demand for you to qualify your statement. Yeah. And uh, I think that's important for us too when it comes to, you know, quote unquote, calling out other people. Listen, we don't war against people. Uh, 1 Corinthians 13, we don't rejoice when someone falls, right? But right. we do war against ideals. And so if I see someone presenting a demonic ideal or a flesh-driven you know, gospel, then I am going to tear down the idea, not the person. And if you've ever seen a video that I made about you know, calling someone out, I will always lead with saying, man, I either know this person or I don't know them, I love them, I value them, but I have a problem with this line of thinking. And I specifically will tear down the line of thinking. And and I want to address something really quick if it's okay. You know, it's funny, even as we're talking about this, there's been a couple comments. There's been a bunch of comments like, those hats are fire. Where'd you get them? (laughs) Where can I get one? And then there's a couple comments that are like, be careful of these guys. They're wearing satanic Masonic hats. (laughs) I know. I saw that. I saw that comment. The Bible talks about... I became a Mason today? Right. (laughs) Wow. When was I going to be told? Soaring on the wings of eagles. Like... Being hidden in the shadow of a wing, like, you know, it's just so funny that people make snap judgments and that you're exactly who we're talking about. Like, it is a dumb, an ignorant, uninformed statement. Well, I don't know if you guys know this. (laughs) I don't know if you know this. I'm in the Illuminati. Oh, no. I don't know. I, and I found out because a a person on YouTube did an entire video that explained how every aspect of my stream studio was these Illuminati symbols that I had intentionally put. And I didn't realize anybody was going to be smart enough to find it and figure it out. I thought that I was just sending a signal to the other Illuminati members to know that I'm an Illuminati (laughs) member because that's. Well, (laughs) Isaiah Isaiah said he saw you do an Illuminati sign earlier. So, yeah. No, my. My thing is, I, I'm waiting for the Illuminati checks, because I haven't mm. received my, my Illuminati checks yet. Well, and this, this But I will think just, Beyonce signs them, so she's busy. This will further solidify <laughs> that you are 
because you know one of the rules is you have to openly state that you are and joke about even it even jokingly so, yeah ex exactly you know, so jim carrey did it now you're in that category i mean right and the, but that's the thing it's like i'm in right now because i'm just now finding out about this <laughs> <laughs> right so it's like an eagle can represent god right or it could be a nazi symbol in a certain way right or it can be a masonic symbol and so it's but here what if it's a neutral symbol depending on how you use it the intentionality of it. Like, what's funny is in my last dream studio, the light that I had was it's an aviation light because V1 is a stage in flight and my church is V1. Mm -hmm. And so the, the video that talks about how I'm an Illuminati was like, the, it was the crystal of the light and all this. And I'm laughing, thinking like, <laughs> that, I did not mean that. So, you know, but here's the thing is it's, it's so funny because people want to see other people fall yep. and they want to know there's no way that Mike could legitimately have gotten 250,000 subscribers. He has to be the Illuminati. Right. There's no way he could have been born and raised in a trailer park, multiple abusive stepdads, welfare, and clawed his way all the way up to running and owning multiple organizations with staff members. There's no way it could be that I work all day and night and then I show myself approved. There's no way that I could have no preached way. in front of 18 people every Sunday until I grew it into a church of thousands. There's no way it could be hard work and grit and determination and fasting and prayer. It's got to be the Illuminati. Right, can't and be the favor of God. It, it can't be. It can't be that I'm radically generous and giving away 30 and 40 percent of all of my income. It can't be that. It's got to be Illuminati. Right. And I think that's the thing is like when you're. It, it's like it just becomes people's excuse. It, it becomes people's excuse where it's yep. just like there has to be some other metric. No, actually, it's it's something completely different. Now, um, I know we don't have a lot of time because Shane's got to head on over to the, the airport. And he's here because we're filming a movie. And I'm going to be releasing a movie in October called The Domino Revival. So and we're going to be talking about um, how really God has raised up voices in this generation to bring an awakening and a, and a renewal and a revival. And we're working on that movie. But Like a um, YouTube movie? Like no, this is going to be syndicated across America in theaters. Oh, it's oh, gonna be awesome. That's, that's official. And yeah, we're working on that thing too. So, um, but I just wanted to deal with this issue because, you know, I serve as apostolic oversight. I speak into hundreds of churches and church pastors. As a matter of fact, as we are going live right now, I have a dozen lead pastors in my Indiana building, and I'm feeding them, and I just got off of a Zoom with them where I was encouraging them. And so speak from the level of authority that God has given you. You know, the Bible says that promotion does not come for the, from the East or the West. Promotion comes from God. Mm. And uh, no algorithm can promote you. It's like even even it's funny. Of course we want to we want to learn, you know, the craft. We want to become better communicators. Of course we want to learn how to be better at reaching people through marketplace ministry like YouTube and Facebook and Instagram. But at the end of the day, I was talking to Jacob Coyne about this yesterday. I have tone, told people exactly what I do and their videos get no views. Hmm. And so it's like I don't know why I did a live stream on why God removes people and 2 million people watched it. I don't know why, because the camera was blurry and, uh, you know, I don't know, but there's a favor on it. Yeah. And so you can't replicate favor. You can replicate the practices, but you can't replicate favor. And there's a favor on people's lives. We were talking about like the heart, David had a heart after God. And it was like, even in the midst of his shortcomings and his fail failures, there was a favor on his life because his heart before God. I don't know why, you know, I was just ministering in North Carolina for Jesse and Parker Green, and we were in their blueberry farm, and they posted one clip of me just ministering, you know, under a tent, and it was just a short clip, and it got 4 million views wow. in 24 hours. And they were like, Pastor Mike, our team shot it and our team edited it and posted it and it got 4 million views. It's the most viewed thing we've ever posted. There is a favor on your life. But I truly believe that whatever happens privately, God platforms publicly. That's good. Yep. Yeah. So I work on my... So you want to work on your public ministry, work on your private intimacy. I love Vlad. Vlad you says know? you either have a... Everyone has a secret. You have a secret sin or you have a secret prayer life. Come on. And, uh, you know, I, or a secret place. And mm -hmm. I think that's my heart is to, to drive people into the secret place. And, and the last thing I want to say about this 
this whole judging thing and judging righteously. Guys, it's really not that hard, but I'll tell you that uh, familiar spirits are a real thing. Mm -hmm. And if you find yourself in a place of gossip or in a place of, you know, wanting to hunt down conspiracies about pastors or preachers or whatever, you will find what you're looking for. And, and it might be uh, truth to you, but it might not be reality. It might look right, but it might be absolutely wrong. And you'll notice, you know, people who gossip, they tend to flock together, yep. right? People who uh, call out other people tend to find each other. And yep. so if you find yourself, maybe you're watching this and you're like, man, you know what? I do kind of, I, I instantly go to uh, critique mode when I'm listening to a preacher, when I'm listening to a teaching. I don't, I don't give people grace or the benefit of the doubt. Um, I want to encourage you to, to repent of that and to give that to the Lord. Because yeah. if you find yourself in this cycle of just tearing down teachings that you hear, that's all you're ever going to operate under is that, that kind of lens, whether it's fleshly or spiritual, whatever. You know, we want to be people who give people the benefit of the doubt. I always, when I'm listening to a new preacher, I am hoping that they're just preaching something good until yeah. I have a good reason to not listen to them anymore. Right. Whereas there's so many people out right now who they're waiting for a, a teacher, a preacher, whatever, to say one wrong thing so they could go, oh, I knew it. I knew that that person was whatever. You know, I've had that where I've been preaching for a year or two on social media, and I've said something incorrectly, or I mixed up two stories and I meshed them into one, and someone said, I knew this guy was false. I was waiting for him to say... And it's like, man, you know, is that a quality that you want people to say of you as a Christian, is that you have zero grace, you have zero mercy, you have zero compassion... And here's the last thing to check yourself. If someone you're watching truly is in error, why are you not praying for them? Yep. Why are you tearing them down? Why are you rejoicing when they're wrong? You know, we as Christians, when I see a, a brother in error, it, it makes me sad, and I want to see them restored. I don't want people to fall. I don't want people to um, experience some of the things that we've seen big ministers experience. And so, you know, that's the true heart of a father. That's the heart of the Lord. That's why he disciplines and rebukes us, is because he doesn't want us to do something that you know can't be undone. And so, I hope that all of us listening can adopt the the Father's heart when it comes to rebukes. They do need to happen, but they must happen biblically and in the in the right heart. And again, the gospel lays out how to correct a brother who's in error, yeah. and that same method can be applied online. Um, so that's I would I would refer back to the Bible when it comes to making a correction. Yeah. yeah. Did you want to say something? No, I was just going to say, you know, and this is more of just like a, a what if to the people watching, like what would what would the condition of your heart start to look like if you spent more time praying for the person than you did in the comment section about them or editing your video, taking them down? It's like, mm -hmm. what if that was your first response? Like, man, I'm going to bring this to the Lord and I'm going to pray for this person. I'm going to pray for their ministry, right. that they would have an encounter and that they would get a true revelation. It's like, wh when did our first response be to like, man, I'm going to make a video about this? It's like, man, right. take that to the Lord and and maybe maybe it will you know confirm like, okay, you need to bring correction. But I'm sure there's a lot of stuff, man, where it's like the Lord's just going to deal with it in your heart and he's going to transact something in the spiritual realm and that you really the thing that you were feeling that drove you to make a video maybe it was the holy spirit actually just beckoning you to pray for the person but we have such a, a content social media call out culture where it's like oh man i just i need to tell a thousand people about this right yeah you have you you'll have two ministers one who make a video saying this person is correct or whatever and the other person calling that minister out and they both say that they heard the lord Right. Something's off. So this is where, if you need to pray for anything today, pray for discernment. Pray that God would help you discern what is of him and what is not. What is his spirit and what is another spirit? And I'm telling you, if that is your prayer life and you're staying in the presence of the Lord, my biggest prayer is, Lord, I never want to be deceived. So please, you know, don't let me uh, fall for another voice, even one that sounds like you. And listen, if you're not 100% sure... 
Not everything needs to go on the internet. I'll just I'll end with that. What? <laughs> yeah, come <laughs> what? on. Not everything. <laughs> Biggest revelation uh, of the day. Wow. Yeah. I'll tell you what though. I'm very concerned if your Holy Spirit, the one that you say you're listening to, always gives you information about someone else and never gives you information about yourself. Mm. I'm very concerned if your Holy Spirit never tells you how you're wrong, but always tells you how they're wrong. Very, very concerned because I question if you're listening to the the Holy Spirit or a holy a demon masquerading as the Holy Spirit or even your own narcissistic personality operating in the realm of your consciousness as the Holy Spirit. Yikes. Because the one thing I'll tell you is I very rarely, if ever, have heard a discernment ministry narrate a story about how the Holy Spirit recently corrected them. Wow. I, I've never, mm -hmm. I never. It's, it's never like, you know, I was in prayer the other day and, and the Lord dealt with this on me because, because their Holy Spirit, which is probably a familiar spirit, is always giving them information about someone else, a perspective about someone else. But I know the Holy Spirit. Yeah. And the Holy Spirit is constantly saying, Mike, you didn't say that with love, with gentleness, with kindness, with long suffering, what, of the fruits of the Spirit. Right. And you will know them by their fruit. And I examined somebody's ministry by fruit. Matter of fact, you can always tell the fruit of someone's ministry by their comment section. Wow. Some people's comment section literally looks like demonic minions mobilizing. Oh, yeah. Like, light their torches, burn them at mm -hmm. the stake. And it's like, dude, some of these comment sections are like a digital lynch mob. And they're liking the comments. Oh, yeah. That's and the they red love flag it. for me. I rebuke people who comment that stuff in my post. You yeah. know not to do that on my page. But when I see something that feels... When, when I see a post that feels sarcastic, like it doesn't... It, I don't discern that it's... It's loving. I'm just like, man, this is coming off sarcastic. I check the comments. And the way that it's a dead giveaway to me is when someone else is commenting something sarcastic and the poster likes that comment. And I'm right. like, you just revealed your heart position right there. Every single time. No one's going to receive anything from this. Yes, every single time. I always say sarcasm is the defense of the weak mm. because you don't have the courage to say what you really think. So you're saying it through a thinly veiled sarcasm. Right. And you and here's the thing. So kind of like winding down here. Thank you for sticking around this entire time. I want to make a major point in a second. But what you could do right now is hit that thumbs up. Smash the thumbs up because it tells the algorithm, send this video to more people than the discernment community's videos. Yes. <laughs> I mean, let's make the right things viral right now. Come on. Share this right now. For real. Give it to somebody who needs it. And I, I think that the apostles of the New Testament, the first century church 2,000 years ago, naming people by names, they earned the right to do that because most of them experienced martyrdom. Wow. They were saying, I am going to shed my blood mm. just as Christ shed his. In other words, I'm willing to die for this thing. That's the skin I have in the game. And you got people who are keyboard warriors kicking it in their mom's basement, and they're bold behind the keyboard. Those same people... I've met some of them in person. I said, now look me in my eyes and tell me what you said on Facebook. Look me in my eyes and tell me what you said on YouTube. And they don't have the courage to do it. And so there's a big difference between a first century apostle naming people by name who's going to experience martyrdom like Peter being crucified upside down saying, I'm not even worthy to die like my Savior. Yeah, Peter, you need to call out some names. Go ahead and do it, homie. Right. Uh, but, but the dude that... You know what I mean? You just came out of your seventh year of seminary, and you've never led anybody to Christ in the whole seven years that you've been studying the Greek, Hebrew, and Aramaic. Get out of here with that mess. I don't care what you think. Or somebody who's never cast out a demon telling me uh, that I'm casting demons out the wrong way. Well, guess what? You cannot steer a parked car. That's good. You can't steer a parked car. You can't ride a bicycle. You're not pedaling. And so I got much more respect for people who are doing ministry the wrong way, knowing that the Holy Spirit, all he's got to do is bring correction. Yes. All he's got to do is come in. And, and yep. guess what? I got much more respect for that person than the person who's parked in their chair doing nothing. 
You're a water boy. I'm on the team. And so you could tell me I'm playing the game wrong. You're a water boy. You're not even playing the game. Some of you are sitting in the stadium. You're sitting in the stands. You're booing while I'm actually batting. I'm doing something right now. It's like, yeah. I'd rather, and so that's the thing about it. It's like, God, I'm telling you, he can correct me. He can speak. He can, he can do it. But for some of these people, it's like, bro, you bought a ticket to watch the game. I'm playing the game. And it's just a different. It's I know that came out no, wrong. real quick. I know that came out wrong. <laughs> yeah, I mean, just real quick, Pastor Mike. I know that there's people who just heard you say that and got triggered. Like, how dare you call me a water boy? Like, <laughs> humility. <Water boy. laughs> I see water people in the boy. chat. They're like, water boy. If the shoe fits. Kick it off. <laughs> Come on. Come on. It's like, but that's where like the same the same pride that just triggered you when Pastor Mike said that is the same pride that. It's blocking God's purpose in your life. Cut right. him, and it's like, like you need to walk in, <laughs> you need to walk in humility. We need to send some cookies out after this right here. <laughs> like if, if that triggered you, it's because you're the water boy. But guess, but guess what? Guess what? The same Holy Spirit in Pastor Mike and Shane, myself, all the ministers that you see online is in you. You don't have to be a water boy, but you gotta have the humility to take the coaching. Yeah. Oh well, you gosh. know what? And this is what it is. I just want to encourage you guys. I didn't say that to offend you. I can't, I'm saying that to say, do what God's called you to do. Seriously. If, if some of these people would spend more time preaching than evaluating other people's preaching, then they would be building a legacy, not just building a YouTube channel. Wow. Yeah. It, it's like if, if you spent more time prophesying than calling other people a false prophet, you, now this is what I wanted to end it on because I told you I was going to end it on a, on a my, my main point, my main point. Whatever happened to exposing what's false by doing what's real? Mm. To me, the number one way that you can expose what's false is to actually live out the real. Mm. That to me is the number one way. Yeah. Because when you've sat under real preaching, it is convicting. Real preaching turns your insides because deep calls out to deep. Real preaching brings you to a place of repentance. Real preaching brings you to a place of action. And so I don't have I don't waste my time diagnosing everybody's sermons and you know, oh, let's play back this clip when they said this. Why? Because I'm spending my time trying to be the solution. I'm trying to write the sermon sermons that, hey, God, am I writing this sermon in a way that's in alignment with your will? You know, here's the thing. I love my wife the best I can and let my real love for her expose. And I, I don't have to tell someone, hey, man, you're a bad husband. I just need to be a good one. Hmm. Because then what happens is he watches me and says, I want to love my wife the way that Mike loves his wife. That's good. You know, I, I don't have to call people out for being a bad dad. I'm going to be a good dad. And then people say, man, I want to be a dad like Mike. I want to I want to lead my family like that. It's like, you know what I mean? Can you yes. imagine if I said, I'm never going to have kids. I'm never going to get married, but I'm just going to make videos about how you could be married. Uh, yeah. Who's listening? There's no authority right. there. Yep. You know, it's like, I'm going to, and, and that's actually the spirit of the, the, of the age right now is you got the, and I'm going to say it like my friend Ruslan does the L, LGTV community, <laughs> you know, the LGTV community wants to tell Shane and me and Evan how to, how to raise our kids, but they biologically can't even have kids in the orientation that they're espousing. So you're oh. going to tell me how to raise my kids and you're going to bring your agenda into my into libraries and schools and into targets and stores and you're going to tell me how I should raise my kids when your 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 orientation can't even produce them. Right, you're going to tell me my identity when you don't even know what yours is. It's the same your, spirit. Your identity's fluid. So don't let that spirit come into the church. Yeah. And now you don't have a ministry and you're going to tell me how to do ministry? Same spirit. Your orientation doesn't replicate disciples just like their orientation doesn't replicate kids can i give a last word of encouragement yes please do because i feel ornery and a little carnal right now listen yeah i got your back <laughs> <laughs> listen if you're if you're a teacher you're a preacher you're you're spreading the word or whatever f for some of you this is the word and it's just keep your head down keep yeah. your head down and just keep putting one foot in front mm -hmm. of the other ignore what others are saying um you know 
uh, go in, go in confidence if you are preaching the word of God that He is going to back up His own word. Yes. Remember that the Holy Spirit, one of His roles is advocate. He will advocate for you. He will be your lawyer, right? And he's your judge. He's all of it. And so some of you are, are worried about this cancel culture, and it, it has choked you out to where you don't even want to speak out anymore. Just push all of that out of your mind. Keep your head down. Keep focus on the road ahead and just keep going. So I mean, that's, good. that's all you got to do is just keep going. That's all we've done is we just haven't quit. We haven't been we haven't been yeah. moved by the opinions of man. I am moved by God's opinion. And I'm telling you, yeah. when God comes and speaks to you, your life will change. I thought I was running with the Lord for 25 years, you know, because I had called myself a Christian. And one day in my bedroom, God spoke to me and said, You've never lived for me a single day in your whole life. Woo! How many of you know I don't need to be rebuked by any pastor at that point? My whole life was changed <laughs> because God spoke to me. So some of you, just keep running the race that you're running, come on, Shane. and God yeah. will come in. He will father you. It's biblical. He won't let you be an orphan. He won't let you run alone. He won't let you get into trouble. He will speak to you. So let that be a word of encouragement. Don't let so the enemy good. or people who are listening to the enemy choke you out of your purpose. Wow. Guys, this has been straight up fire. Make sure you hit that subscribe button and then ring the bell notification so you never miss another live stream. Go ahead and do that right now. We're not building an audience. We're building an army, and you've been equipped right now. Probably the funniest question that came up in the chat, and I just want to say this before we peace out. <laughs> I'm wearing a hat, and someone said, Pastor Mike, I love how shiny your head is. What oil do you use? <laughs> okay. What? <laughs> no. <laughs> Take the hat off. No, They've been wanting to ask no, that. that nothing to do. Oh. with what we were talking about. Some of you need prayer because, and I just want to tell you, I'm thoroughly embarrassed because I don't use any oil. That's just me being greasy. <laughs> Oh, my. oh, no. <laughs> and so, love you guys. This has been an amazing time together. We're linking to Shane's channel as well as Evan's. I appreciate if you would go over and subscribe to their channel because they're teaching and rightly dividing the scripture. And make sure that you stay tuned for all, all the other stuff that we're putting out. I do want to briefly explain. We're going to link it in the description as well so you could tap the link to, to see. These hats are actually Shane's ministry. So, do you want to do like a 30 second spot and tell them why we're all? wearing these hats and yeah. it's, it's not a Masonic covenant. Mason. Right. <laughs> yeah. So the cover story is that I run an organization called Overcomers. <laughs> and uh, basically... So, somebody's going to clip that. I know. Yeah. It's okay. I'm used to it. Yeah. Uh, I, I'm going to start doing like kingdom schools that are one and two weeks long. The first one is this summer. It's digital because we can't meet in person because we found out my wife is pregnant again. So uh, if you sign up at ShaneWinnings.com, you get a free hat. Otherwise, you can DM me on Instagram if you want one to purchase. We don't have them up on the website yet. We will soon. But we're just we're trying to activate people in identity, in hearing God's voice, in prayer and fasting. Uh, so that's what it's all about. We just had these in, and I wanted to gift these guys a, a hat. So you're seeing them first here. Come on, tap uh, the link thanks. in the description and go support him.